meditation, unless you use a different type of meditation, which you found in the Tibetan tradition, which is called Lamrim, stages on the path, in that one, you actually do reflection. And then it's more similar to what you're talking about. But in what we mean by meditation here with mindfulness, what you do is this, what I talked about this morning. You focus on the sensation of breathing, for example, and then you try to experience the change of that. And that's what the meditation refers to in terms of that tradition. But for example, in Lamrim, in that Tibetan tradition, you have a, th a theme. The theme, for example, is death. And then for 30 minutes, you reflect on death, but in a certain way, analytical way. They tell you three questions you have to ask. One is to reflect on the uncertainty of the time of death, that you never know when you're going to die. Then you reflect on the fact that although it's uncertain, death is certain because it's going to happen. Nobody has not died in a way. And then the third movement of the reflection is, since death is certain but its time is uncertain, what should I do now? What is the important thing for me to do now? So that, I think, maybe is more akin to what you might be talking about, a sort of analytical reflection, contemplation. But when nowadays people talk about meditation as in mindfulness meditation, then generally they refer to, to concentration on a certain object in the experience and being aware of its changing nature. That, so that's why it might be a little different from what you kind of uh, would like to do or would prefer to do, which is also fine. And I think there are also different contemplation methods with different words or even with image and things of that nature. Uh, that's a good school, interesting school. Uh, I mean, I was trained uh, partly in a similar type of school because I did the Korean Zen practice in Korea for 10 years. And they believe that you're awakened already. But they also see, I mean, they have a saying which say, Buddha, sentient beings are Buddhas and Buddhas are sentient beings. So in a way, there it's more the idea, in one moment you can be awakened, and the next moment you can be deluded. That in a way you meditate, so you are more likely to be awakened than to be deluded. So that's generally what, the way they understand it. But of course there are some, some school of thought which think you, know, you are enlightened and already you don't have to do anything. The problem is that most of the time we don't feel that way. So they can say it, <laughs> but it might not make a difference. You know, this is a thing, this is a thing. You know, personally I would say yes, we have the potential for awakening. You see, in, the, in Buddhism you can see how the idea of awakening has changed over time. First it was thought that you know you had to go through many, 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 many lifetimes like the Buddha, and then the last lifetime you would have the major big bang. But the problem with that one, for ladies, is that the last life you had to be a man. And to me, an awakening that is gendered, I am a little suspicious. <laughs> then you, had, you started to have the idea that you could be awakened in one lifetime. So then awakening was like a seed you had to water. And then over time it would grow and bloom into awakening. Then you had the third idea, which was that you were awakened already. That actually it's not a seed, but that you are awakened already. And the only thing you have to do is to manifest it. But to manifest it, since we don't seem to manifest it easily, then generally they tell you to sit 10 hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> so, although Zen say that, you know, you awaken already, I mean, you know, they, they make you sit 10 hours a day, you know, three months at a time, you know, so it, it's hard work too, even if you're already enlightened. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think it's kind of like trying to 
approach this from different angles. You know, because sometimes we try too hard. Like if you have the impetuous mind, you want to be awakened yesterday. And then generally it makes you tense trying to meditate. Why well, I'm not, you know, I must be awakened. And that's what they said, don't worry, just be there, just breathe, be awakened now. And sometimes it works. You can relax and be less grasping and self-centered. And in that moment it works. But it doesn't work all the time, <laughs> this approach. So it's like any approach. You see that sometimes you can give a little angle, kind of saying that you're not you know, totally stuck. You're not totally deluded. You have ba I think what basically they're saying is you have a potential to awaken. And basically, I think what meditation helps us to do is to develop more the choice to have an awakened moment instead of a deluded moment. I think that's more about that. The problem is when you think that awakening is a permanent state. You know, so if somebody is awakened, they're permanently kind of, you know, enlightened and 100% wise and compassionate. And having, having lived and seen various great teachers, they're not 100% enlightened all the time. <laughs> you know, maybe more, more often than us, but still, so I think we have to be careful of this kind of, again, having this fixed idea. And to see more awakening as a potential. That we have the potential to awaken, we have the potential to be wise, we have the potential to be compassionate. And what the Buddha brought to this was that is look at conditions. In certain conditions will help us to be more wise and compassionate. Other conditions will make us more stressed and tight. So it's basically, I think that's one of the key features of the Buddha that he introduced in that uh, debate is the fact of looking at condition, not trying to be above condition, but really trying to penetrate the condition and trying to basically creatively engage with condition. I think that's what he brought to this uh, debate of uh, awakening and practice. Yes. Yes and no, yes and no. You see, it's a, it, first you have to see what are the conditions now. You see, I mean, it could be nice. I'm sure that for some people, it, often that's a dream. You know, if I became a monk and a nun and went on top of the mountain and then, you know, I could practice so hard and actually you are, you know, doing the, the, the washing and you have, you know, two children and they're kind of, you know, difficult and things are problematic at work and da da. So you mean to think, you know, I mean, I lived in a monastery and I saw people coming thinking, you know, this is going to sort me out. And a lot of the time it did not sort them out. <laughs> uh, so uh, we had this lovely guy. He, he was in Thailand, you know, and in Thailand he called to deal with him because he was so difficult. <laughs> and he created trouble. No doubt, he created trouble. And to me, he was a great teacher because it, it made me understand something. He would come to have tea, and within two minutes, we would have an argument. <laughs> and it would be unpleasant. So this happened a few times. I thought, wait a minute, do I want to continue to do this? And I, so I brought the mindfulness to what happens. And I could see that he wanted an argument. Like he would say things in purpose to get an argument. So after that, equanimity, he would say something like, hmm, possibly you could see it that way. Hmm, interesting angle. <laughs> and so there was no argument. And then he, he stopped coming to visit me. <laughs> it was not fun. But for me, after that, I was much better, much better in discussion. So you see, I, I think, what I was meaning more is to see, for example, with the tiredness. If you are tired, I'm talking more in terms of daily life. Because in terms of meditation, I think meditation, try to do it where you can. 
And if there is noise, no noise, deal with whatever condition. But it's more in terms of daily life. That if you're in daily life, and you, when you're tired, you get irritable, then maybe you could try to be less tired. Or we could try to have more rest. That's what I mean. Or to be aware, OK, I am tired. I might get into difficulty. So being aware of the condition. Sometimes we can change the condition, sometimes we cannot. But if you're mindful of the condition, you might be able to react in a less strong way. So that's what I mean. Not that we necessarily need to create perfect condition. That's not possible. But we can try to be more aware of the power of condition. Then we can also help ourselves. You know, that, that's what I'm talking about. Maybe we'll stop here. And thank you very much. It was uh, wonderful to see you on Easter Sunday. It was heroic, especially on a sunny Easter Sunday, to come and visit.